Hi guys, it's Coral. This is my first go into the foray. Um, I am very interested in um, a variety of different type topics and uh, this is as good as any to enter into it. So uh, this is a very controversial topic and so therefore one of my favorites and that is because I like topics that people are afraid to talk about and the reason why is because we almost seem to trust people to make those tough decisions for us and I think that's dangerous because Really, the best people that should be making these types of decisions is you. Uh, you don't have the same the same uh, story as everybody else, and um, it's our unique stories that is important. So the topic today that uh, I wanted to speak about is, as I mentioned, a bit taboo, and um, that is women's reproductive. Very recently, New York had um, been all over the news in regards to the abortion laws and what it actually did and what it didn't do. And that led us down so many different rabbit holes and basically my feed on my Facebook became plastered with pro-life versus pro-choice and it kind of got me down even talking with my husband about what is moral about it, what is ethical about it and that's kind of where my brain starts going crazy because I'm trying to understand a lot of philosophy and um, ethics and meta-ethics and I don't really know too much about it but I'm working on it and it's something that I definitely need to learn more on but I love those thought experiments that really get you wondering what if what would you do i was watching i think it was serious Cyrus. he had a very interesting thought experiment with this and if you haven't seen it i will link to it somewhere and for you to go ahead and and take a look but i think it definitely got me thinking and I had already written an article if you haven't checked out my uh, Wattpad I have joined the conversation on for free for anybody to read um, and one of last week's articles was actually already on this because it had I want to say they already did the article for New York and so I was already arguing about this topic I know and so I was reading up on uh oh gosh what was it it was sorry for the beeps oh Judith Thompson's violinist analogy so it's from a defense for abortion and I have links to it. It's a fascinating read. If you get an opportunity to read over it, I highly suggest it. And um, I'll go ahead and, and read it for you. And I apologize if I completely muck this up. Um, so here we go. But now let me ask you to imagine this. You wake up in the morning and find yourself back to back in bed with an unconscious violinist. A famous unconscious violinist. Sidetrack, I don't know why that this person's like, like being famous matters, but they included it here for some reason. 
All right, back to it, sorry. <laughs> he has been found to have a fatal kidney ailment. And the Society of Music Lovers has canvassed all the available medical records and found that you alone have the right blood type to help. Lucky you. <laughs> um, they have therefore kidnapped you. Okay, unlucky for you. And last night, the violinist's circulatory system was plugged into yours so that your kidneys can be used to extract poisons from his blood as well as your own. The director of the hospital now tells you, look, we're sorry the Society of Music Lovers did this to you. We would have never permitted it if we had known, but still, they did it. So, tough luck. And the violinist is now plugged into you. To unplug you would be to kill him, but never mind. It's only for nine months. And by then, he will have recovered from his ailment and can safely be unplugged. Because that matters, apparently. Is it morally incumbent on you to accede to this situation? No doubt it would be very nice of you if you did a great kindness. But if you have to accede to it, what if it were not nine months, but nine years? Or longer still? What if the director of the hospital says, tough luck? I agree, but now you have to stay in bed with the violinist plugged into you and for the rest of your life. Because remember this, all persons have a right to life and violinists are persons too. Granted, you have a right to decide what happens in your body but a person's right to life outweighs your right to decide what happens in and to your body. So you cannot, you cannot ever be unplugged from him. I imagine you would regard this as outrageous, which suggests that something really is wrong with the plausible sounding argument I mentioned a moment ago. I don't know how plausible it sounds, but it does get you to think, right? So, there's several things that many people, way before me, have um, found flawed about this analogy. So, because it's supposed to be an abortion analogy, right? And some of the big things that immediately come to mind is the problem that it is no familial relation that's obviously an issue um there's no such thing as a society of music lovers as far as i know although i would totally be part of that i'm just saying music is it connects us it's everything um but not if they start attaching famous violinists to people i'm not okay with that <laughs> um yeah, and, and then, of course, there's the whole consent issue here. You know, that, that's, that's pretty, pretty bad. Um, I'm trying to think of what other reasons. I'm sure that there's more that I could come up with if I, if I had took more time to think about it. I apologize. So, my main pulpit or excuse me, my main purpose of doing this analogy was I came up with my own analogy that hopefully is a little bit closer to in an abortion analogy. I tried to adjust, um, or excuse me, I tried to address the big failings I feel of the other parts. I think one thing about abortion that some people do consider is they blame the woman for having sex. And apparently, in this weird world we live in, that if you consent to sex, apparently you are also consenting to pregnancy, which makes no sense in my head because just because you have sex doesn't mean you want to be pregnant. Like, I definitely don't want kids. 
and I enjoy sex, so I don't consent. And um, so I make sure that I don't get pregnant. And so I, I guess I do have a leg in this game, but not a very big one because I do make sure that I make the right decisions um, when it comes to my medical health. And maybe that's not the right way to say that. I'll have to ponder it a little bit more, I guess, because I don't know what I would do in that situation. I haven't had to make that decision. And I can see it, it, it doesn't make it right or wrong. Let me back up and um, do my own abortion analogy, okay? All right, so here it is. You wake up to find out that your child is sick. After rushing them to the hospital, you find out that they are in organ failure of some kind. The doctors run tests and find out they need an organ transplant. Since it's your child, they run the diagnostics and you just happen to be an exact match. Not only that, but you are the only one in your family that is a match. You agree to the transplant knowing there is a health risk to you and your child, but you still agree. However, when you wake up, the doctor explains that there was a unforeseen complication. They cannot untether you from the child for at least nine months. Since you consented to giving them the organ initially, and now we're gonna go back to Thompson's analogy, the director of the hospital now tells you, look, we're sorry the doctor did this to you. We never would have permitted it had we had known, but still, they did it. The child is now plugged into you. To unplug you would be to kill your child, but never mind. It's only nine months. By then, they'll have recovered from the ailment and can safely be unplugged from you. So, are you morally obligated to stay plugged into the child? If so, why? I mean, I could see if the woman chose to do it, but why would and should they be forced to stay plugged into the child with complete disregard to whether or not it's healthy for you to stay plugged into the child during that time? I mean, what if you develop complications? What if having being uh, plugged into this child makes it so that you can't get, say, cancer treatment that you need? Or what if even after those nine months, the child is only going to live a day or a week post being born or being unplugged? Like, does those things matter at all? to whether or not it's moral to force someone to do something against their will. I mean, obviously we would want people to want to help each other, but do we have a right to force someone to do it? I think that's what comes down to the crux of my argument. And that is, I don't believe that we have a right to force anyone to do anything. The freedoms that we have in this country, it comes down to everyone should have the same right to pursue happiness, to be able to live life. And I think that everyone should have the right to their own autonomy and be able to decide whether or not they want to help each other. 
Although I do want to encourage a world where everyone does help each other. I don't want to force anyone to do it. I just don't think that's right. But hey, I could be wrong. If you find any, you know what? If you find anything wrong with some of my reasonings or if you just hate my analogy, I wanna hear it. Let me know. Cause I'm learning and that's how we do this. Until then, check out the full story, the full book, uh, hashtag join the conversation, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.